here I am, uh, Einstein, as my students would say. Uh, now I realize I don't really look like Einstein at the moment. My wife just gave me a, a haircut or a little trim around the edges. So, but uh, if you stick with me and I stick with this, then uh, by the time we get to the end of grade 10 math, hopefully I will look a little bit more like Einstein. Well, um, so we're doing grade 10 math. Uh, that is according to the Manitoba curriculum. Uh, you can read more about that in the, uh, in the website. So, uh, the first unit, or strand, as they call it in the government outline, is on measurement. And uh, for measurement, we will focus primarily on length, area, and volume. So, for measurement in general, there are always uh, two questions that we have to ask ourselves. First is, what is it that we're measuring? Like, what is the property that we're dealing with? And the second question would be, uh, how, what do we measure it in? What are the units that we are using? Well, so we are dealing with length, and length is essentially the same as distance. For instance, if you ask me how tall I am, then I can stand up straight or lie down, and we can measure the distance from the sole of my foot to the top of my head, and that would be a length as well as a distance and so that's also answered the question that would answer the question how tall I am. Alright and then what units do we measure? But when we deal with time uh, we will have to think about uh, units like uh, we can measure it in seconds, we can measure it in minutes, in hours, in days, in years and so with length also there are various units that we can use but we need some kind of a standard that we agree on that we all can understand and uh, that is uh, always exactly the same only in this way can we communicate function as a society and a culture and so this is really what it is all about is particularly in this first lesson first we will deal with the uh, early use of units in human history and if you look back in time and it's interesting to do some a little bit of research about this and uh, perhaps if you have done the discovery questions the research questions you will already have found some of this so centuries ago different people groups used different ways to come up with units for measurement and very often they used the human body I want to give you some examples of early units of length that related to the human body. First, the units of hand and span. Hand referred to the width of four fingers. You may want to try that yourself. For me, a hand measures about eight or nine centimeters or three and a half inches in width. Span refers to the whole hand as we stretch it out so that it is the distance between the end of the thumb to the end of the little finger. Try it for your hand. My span is about 24 centimeters or about 10 inch. Next, let's take a look at two larger units. First, the fathom. Nowadays, the term is used for measuring the depth of water. We also use it figuratively, because if you cannot fathom something or somebody, you cannot really understand it or comprehend her. It is too deep for your comprehension. In measuring depth, fathom is also a unit. It is equal to two yards or six feet. But originally, it referred to the distance between your fingertips when you stretch out your arms. Try that. For an adult man, this may be about 2 yards or 6 feet. Now a league. This probably originates from the time of the Roman armies. A league is the distance that an infantryman could walk in one hour. So a soldier's march in one hour, that distance was called a league. Apparently a league 
was about three and a half miles or about five and a half kilometers. We already mentioned yards and feet and inches. These units are part of the British Imperial System. They also have a long history and they originally also referred to body parts. The foot is pretty obvious. It refers to the length of a human foot. It's actually a pretty big foot for I wear size 14 shoes and yet my foot is less than one foot long. The inch refers to the width of a man's thumb. Wikipedia tells me that in the year 1150 a King David of Scotland decreed that the inch is the width of a man's thumb as measured just below the nail. Well, go ahead and check it out. I hope you have learned a few things in this section. First, since people come in different sizes, even among adults, such units are not very accurate in our communication or fair in trade. Conclusion It's important that we, even internationally, have a common standard for all our measurements. And second, if you remember the original meaning of inch and foot, you will find it easier to guess short distances, how long they are in the imperial system. Your hand comes in as a handy ruler, so you will always carry it with you to estimate the distance if it's small enough. But what we see in history is that actually very often uh, emperors and in Greek empires what they wanted to do is they wanted to unify the whole empire and make it the same like often try to have the same uh, language and try sometimes to have the same religion and particularly also for communication and trade to have the same uh, units so we will see this, uh, for instance, if you have done the uh, research question, you have found out that Napoleon did that. So when Napoleon uh, conquered the, the lower lands of uh, northwestern Europe, the Netherlands, then uh, this is what they did. They said Napoleon would present a standard meter, a standard kilogram, and a standard liter and say this is what you all have to use. And if you don't know what it is, come here and check my example here and then use this because now you're part of my great empire and it's not only Napoleon who did this but as I said the, the Romans did that and China Qing Shi Huang the yellow emperor the first emperor of China he did this and uh, so also you find this in the British Empire and that leads us to the to the third topic is about the measurements of length and uh, in general also the standards of measurement that we use in Canada. Generally we have then two systems of measurement that are very common and that you have heard about I'm sure and that is the imperial system and that is the metric system. The imperial system, the word imperial refers to empire and as I said already the British Empire established this system of uh, measurement and uh, used it throughout its empire uh, through all the colonies and the lands that they would that would be under their rule. Now of course uh, history didn't stop there and the great British Empire is not what it used to be. Uh, but, uh, on the other hand, we see a great trend to globalization. So even though there is not one emperor, uh, emperor in charge, uh, there is a great uh, desire for many nations to have a uniform uh, standard for measurement so that uh, whether it's in trade or whether it's in scientific research, we can easily communicate with countries and languages all over the world so that we all know if we're talking about a particular size of something, a particular length of something, that we all know exactly what it is. Now, particularly in the scientific world, uh, there is now the SI, and SI stands for uh, literally International System or International System of uh, Units. 
and this has been adopted by you know, pretty well the countries of the world uh, where they use it uh, specifically in, uh, in science. And this adopts also uh, the metric system and so is a continuation for what, from what actually Napoleon had already instituted across his empire at that time. And so we're dealing with uh, measurements like the meter and the kilogram that are still in, uh, in place uh, today. Now in 1970, uh, Canada decided uh, that uh, under uh, Pierre Elliott uh, Trudeau, decided to follow the metric system. And uh, the idea was that we would drop the imperial system altogether and switch over to the metric system. Of course, that's a huge endeavor, involved a lot of different changes and modification, and it would cost also a lot of money. So this could obviously not happen overnight because people had to be educated and trained and all kinds of you know, things, uh, and especially tools and so had to be changed. Finally, the um, Environment Canada uh, decided to switch over and to record all the weather data in uh, metric units. So not inches of snow depth, but uh, centimeters of snow depth. And uh, so the temperature also was switched from Fahrenheit to uh, Celsius. In 1977, the speed limit signs, uh, so the traffic signs were changed, and also new cars that were sold in Canada had to have their speedometers and odometers in kilometers per hour and in kilometers uh, so to, to fit with the new metric system. In 1980 all milk products were changed to metric measurements and the, uh, the idea was that in fact that all the products we would buy in a grocery store would have to include the, the, the metric uh, measurements. In 1984, actually, the decision to go totally metric was changed, and uh, basically, it is possible in uh, different branches, particularly, to have the imperial system back in place. And uh, you will find this, for instance, uh, when you buy lumber, you go to the to the hardware store, or you buy some uh, some wood because you want to build something. Uh, typically it's all in feet and inches and it's very hard there to communicate in centimeters and meters because the people in the stores and in the lumber yards don't, may not know what you're talking about. So now in uh, mathematics in Canada uh, we need to explain and, uh, and we also need to develop skills in two systems of measurement and uh, we're dealing with length at first and uh, we have to know how to measure length and to uh, work with the length measured in feet and inches, the imperial system, but also in the metric system. So here uh, we have the, the two systems and the most common uh, measurement units that we use for length in Canada. Uh, so in the imperial system, first we have the inch and then the foot. And a foot uh, is the length of 12 inch. This is something you really have to remember, to memorize one foot is 12 inch. A yard, okay, a yard stick is, uh, is shorter than a meter stick, about 10% shorter. And a yard is 3 feet. And this is also something you need to remember, although um, mostly in math we will stick to inch and feet. Um, the yard is also important to know. So one yard is three feet and since one foot is 12 inch then that means that one yard would be three times 12 is 36 inch. So what about the mile, the length of a mile? Uh, this is tricky because actually this was decided in the British Parliament in 1593. Uh, they wanted to change the legislation I guess the government needed more money and uh, there was a certain rate set per mile, I guess per mile of your property length along the road for instance and uh, so what they could do is they change the rate per mile or they could change the definition of a mile and actually it was decided to do that just instead of saying oh the taxes are increased we say no uh, the mile is changed and so they made the the, the mile shorter so that they could get more money from the citizens. So this is what they decided. And the, um, and 
the government documents, it says that it's decided that one mile should be the length of eight furlongs. We don't use furlongs anymore, of course, now, so it doesn't really help us a lot, but it does explain um, the odd number uh, in the relationship between mile and feet. One mile is eight furlongs, one furlong is 40 poles, and each pole is uh, 16 and a half feet. All right, so see if you can do the math. Eight times 40 times 16 and a half. Well, eight times four is 32. Eight times 40 is 320. And then you have to do 320 times 10 and times six and times a half. Add them all up and you get 5,280 feet, 5,000. 280 feet. Well, maybe it's easier to remember one number only and what is it in yards? If you take 5,280 and you divide it by three, because there are three feet, feet, three feet in one yard, you would get 1,760 yards. Try to remember that. Well, we'll have to uh, um, refer to it uh, later if you need it. You. Maybe you can uh, write it down somewhere on your math notebook or so you can easily find that back. But one mile is 1,760 yards. Well, that's all history.